family, it's another Sunday. Another Sunday. Thank you, God. It's time to praise and worship and get oh. that word on. Oh, that's your praise and worship that voice? Was praise and worship. <laughs> Guys, we need you to do us a favor. Come on. We need you to like. Like. Share. 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 And share. I know share. You? She went to Jones. Man, I know share. Yes, you know sir. what? From Walmart. Oh! <laughs> I know that's right. Come on, y'all. Y'all online right now, this is what we want you to do. Listen, if you're watching this right now, this is what we want you to do. Do a TKC strong. Get one of those emojis with them arm that's strong and just put about three of them. TKC strong. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Man, that's a word. You saw the, the goon in me? Come on. See, that's why you That was my Holy Spirit That's face. crazy. <laughs> wow. During this time of this pandemic, there has been a lot going on with people, a level of an uncertainty or, you know, just a little bit of fear. But let me remind you of why God is amazing. And, and let me share it by sharing my feelings about and my sentiments about TKC during this time. TKC has been a pillar of strength and I thank God for it. I always known that my church was amazing, but now to see people who don't go to my church tune in. For instance, I live with my aunt and my daughter and my aunt who just turned 61. Happy birthday, Aunt Carmen. Every Sunday, she gets up and she runs to the TV to see TKC. Three minutes left. Three minutes. And we got to break this down to you because let me tell you, this week been crazy here at TKC online, just social media, Instagram, and Facebook. Now, I don't know if y'all been tuning in, but we had Monday Momentum. It was Momentum Monday. It oh. was the bomb. Did you remix it? It, it was Momentum Monday, not Momentum Monday. Monday Momentum. But what did we do on Tuesday? Help us, God. Talk about it, Tuesday. Talk about it. Y'all. Talk about it Tuesday went down on Instagram. I mean, Prince it was lit. It. Oh, oh my gosh, it was lit. Come on. Betty, Come on. Kim, Pastor it was Jonas. Oh, Pastor Jonas. Come it was, on. It was the bomb. The chaos. And, oh my goodness, I love them. And then Wellness Wednesday was yes. just, I mean, it's in the middle of the week. Hermie You're getting yourself and together. And Samson and his beautiful wife, Hermie, Gorgeous. they were just together. They so out. in shape. They look good. They look fit. We look like a before and after Girl, picture. We look like we need to be We the before. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday. Thriving yes. Thursday. Man. Everything has just been awesome. Yes. So we need you guys to tune in every week every and week. make sure you go to TKC online on our Facebook page to figure out what's happening throughout the week. And you can see it right there on the screen, our social media platform, because we want you to stay connected because it's all about what? Being a part of TKC and seeing what God is doing just for you. you. Man, I just love TKC so much because, you know, normally when you're dealing with situations like COVID-19 and a lot of things are happening around the world, we are still finding a way to be engaged with the community, be engaged with members from the church, and also being engaged with those who are looking for a home church. I mean, we're doing the pay it forward. How powerful is that? You know, to nominate someone or nominate a family or no nominate a person who is in need in a season where everyone is in need. And it's a blessing to be a part of a church that has partnered with so many different organizations. One minute! One minute left! One minute left! One minute left! One minute left. That's 11. Did you see that? One, <laughs> one, one! No. <laughs> One minute left, y'all. One minute left. Guys, create a watch party. We want you to share, tag your friends and family, tag your mama, tag your daddy, tag Listen, your auntie, and anybody. And we want you to have a party. Host the party. Host the party. Stop what you're doing. Host the party. Let all your other friends and family get to experience this amazing uh, online service this here at word TKC. This is a bomb. Today, we want you guys to hashtag TKC Therapy. Let's go. TKC Therapy. Now, we know you enjoyed that therapy session last week. And it was and real for it us. It was on fire. But this one right here, this one right here, this one right here. Thank it, Ramsey. Hey, that note was a little it's off. Almost yeah. Time for the word. It's almost time, almost time for the word. It's almost time for the word. It's almost time for the word. Almost time for the word. Well, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, can we bless the Lord in here? Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. To your homes and just release hope. I know you've been quarantined and you've been around your kids yep. and they're starting to aggravate you. But this is your moment to get loose and give God some praise. So we here.
you're ready to worship, ready to praise God. So, Father, we declare that you should have your way in this place. Move in the way that you want to move. And we will bless you. We will give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, put your hands on it. Right here. Here we go. Clap your hands on.
eat brunch. But if you don't mind putting your plate down and grab your children and just move around in your house and release hope in your room, hope all over your address. Come on, give him a praise right there. Let's go, clap your hands. Come on.
singing a song just receive the hope the love the joy the patience the salvation the healing the presence the anointing the glory of the Lord revelation so I thank you Lord God that in this moment that you would reveal to your sons and daughters what they need to know for now help us not to be focused on what's coming or what's getting ready to happen but may our ears be in tune for what you're saying now speak to us God we are listening we are yielded to what it is that you want to say. So we thank you in advance for what you would do in this atmosphere that we are in. Have your way, God. We promise to give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. Can you just clap your hand and scream hallelujah to the Lamb of God? Hallelujah. 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 It's so sweet to I trust am it. so excited. A different shot, a different space. Does this look great? Listen, y'all, we are getting our stuff together. I want to invite you to know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24, 1. We must remain confident in this, that God will be good to those who put their trust in him. Listen, as we do every week, this is our opportunity to flood the generosity lines by texting the give. Let me do it with you because I don't want to forget. You can text to give, you can cash app, you can push pay, you can mail it in, drive it in, whatever you do. Let's honor God. God who has blessed some of us to still keep working. We need to honor him with what we have. We do not ask you to give what you don't have. God asks you to trust him with what you do have and watch God work. He is faithful. He will do what he said he would do. I, I, it's not a gimmick. It's not a game. If you trust God with what's in your hand, God knows how to take care of what's in your future. Listen, let's do it right now. I want to get back into that word, but I need to give. I need to give. I need to give, and I need to honor God with what I have. Thank you, Father, for giving me what I have, because there's so many people who don't have it right now. I appreciate you blessing my seed, although it leads my life. It leaves my hand. It doesn't leave my life forever. You know how to bring it back to me. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Thank you so much for being TKC Strong. You're helping us make incredible differences in our community and in our city. Thank you. So thanks for stopping by today. Um, what's your name again? My name is Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth? Yes, sir. That's an interesting name. Thank you. Um, what brings you in today, Mephibosheth? Well, I've been going to church for a while. And during this season, I've really been faced with myself. Um, it really started when I was five years old, five, six. 
uh, a nurse that was supposed to be helping me, um, she dropped me. And she dropped me, and, and when she dropped me, my, my, my feet have been crippled ever since. How, so how I, did I, I, she, she dropped me by, she was, she was trying to run, and in her running, she, she ended up just, I guess, underestimating my weight. And, and then she ended up dropping me. And, and what happened as a result of that? My, my my feet has been crippled. It's every day I try to you know make a better day of my life. My my feet is always there. It it it's a constant reminder of what what happened to me. Not I didn't do this to myself. Somebody did this to me. Yeah, I can see how that would be a challenging situation because it's something you can't escape. It would show up. In your, in your job, you're trying to work, but your feet are there. You show up in your relationships, but your feet are there. It shows up in your ability to be able to provide for anyone that you would care about. And it probably is like the first thing that people see even before they know your name. It hurts. It, it, people never give me a chance. They, they label me by my condition. I can't hide my condition. It interferes in the way I'm trying to be a man and trying to raise my kids. I, I, I really struggle because my insecurities are always in me, and, and I, I, I don't, I don't know. So, so how do they show up in your everyday? Because I hear about the kind of pain of being dropped, but I'm also hearing about the pain of living with the kind of side effects of being dropped? The side effects are there. There are moments where I, I, I try to go to sleep. I, I can't rest. I, I've tried to get a job to make money. That, that still doesn't bring me any peace. I, I ended up getting married and, and divorced because my, my feet are always in the way. I, I try to cover my situations, but nothing works, and I, I, I'm just tired. I, I don't I don't know what to do. That's why that's why I'm here. I'm I'm coming because these these this situation has hurt hurt me so bad, and, and people that I love they they can't see my pain. They don't they don't understand. Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's what therapy is really all about. Because what it sounds like has happened here is that what started with a foot problem is now an eye problem, a head problem, and a heart problem. It, it started with the feet, but now it's spreading to impact all of these different parts of you. And you're trying to figure out how to bring them back together. And I think that that's what we really have to work at because therapy, is really about trying to help you make sense out of senseless situations, right? Because the work that we do here is not going to fix your feet, right? But the work that we're gonna do here can fix your heart. The work that we are gonna do here can fix your head, can fix your eyes. I say your eyes because you have, you have sight, but you got limited vision. But how do you get limited vision from a foot problem and it makes sense because you're trying to make sense of a senseless situation with childlike skills here this adult situation comes in and somebody in their hurry to help you miscalculates mismanages you and as a result harms you and that happens unfortunately to more people than you can possibly think where somebody tried to help them, but in their hurry ended up hurting them. And here you are living with the effects of the hurt, even to this day. And what we're gonna do is work at getting at where is Mephibosheth behind all of this? Because you're still there. You're still there. What makes you you, what makes you a child of God, what makes you worth being here can never be broken but it's hard to see because people always remind you of what they see 
but you're always been more than that, right? Because aren't you the son of Jonathan? I am. I, uh, because it's been so difficult, I, I've been staying in a place called Lodabar. Um, Lodabar, yeah, Lodabar is a, it's, it's a place where it's pastureless, it's visionless, it's, it's just kind of everybody goes through the routine of life. We, we spend all of our days just kind of hoping our lives will get better. We, <laughs> we've even went to church and maybe thought if we danced, it would go away. But when we come back to Lodabar, our, our feet are still, are still maimed. How'd you get to Lodabar? Your nurse took you to Lodabar? No, when she dropped me, I, like many people I've learned, I just figured it out. I, 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 I asked people for help to get me places and sometimes they took advantage of me because they knew I was helpless. And I, after disappointment, disappointment, I just, I crawled my way to the finish line. That's the best way to define my life. It's just been a constant crawling of trying to get to nothing. I crawled days to get to the Loda Bar, which is nothing. No place. No place. But, but you weren't alone. I had people around me, but I still felt alone. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can get that. So there's this community, but there isn't this, there's not like a fellowship. There are people, there are bodies yes. that are collected in Lodabar. Yes. Yeah. But that's not where you're supposed to be. And I think that that sometimes is, can be a struggle because we can find ourselves settling in places that we were never meant to settle for. You are the grandson of Saul, the son of Jonathan, a literal child of the king, and you are in a place that has no name. That is beneath you. It doesn't matter even if you crawled there, this place is still beneath you. And the work that we have to do is to get you up and out of a place that you had no business of ever being there. And it doesn't matter how many other people are there. Perhaps the reason why you're there was not to build a permanent location, but to recognize that there are folks that are discarded, that are discounted, that are cast aside and looked over, and somebody has to see them. And you could only see them from the vantage point that you were given when you were dropped. How does God reconcile suffering and like what happened to me? How does how does that fit in the framework of God? I, I mean, in church, we don't always talk about how people suffer emotionally and they love God, but their emotions are in the way. Yeah. I think that's an excellent question. And I often ask myself how to look for, how can we see God at work in this? Not in the sense that we're trying to justify suffering, that we're trying to rationalize suffering, because good people die, good people get hurt. Just like you're telling me today, good people get dropped. And what do we do, what do, we do and what can we say about God and our faith in light of that? And the thing that I often go to is how can we see God fighting for the best in broken situations? Because at the end of the day, I can't help but recognize that you're talking to me about a situation that you were dropped when you were five. And you look a whole lot older than five today. So there's something that has sustained you in giving you the capacity, the willingness, the fortitude to fight despite being dropped. That's the strength 
that is beyond you. That's a strength that's beyond even me. There's something that is empowering you, enabling you, encouraging you, even in your broken places to keep going. And if that ain't God, I don't know what is. And furthermore, I would say that that same strengthening spirit that has sustained you from there to here is at work in bringing you into this place, my office. God's at work here, just as God has been at work in all of these other places. And so the question about what does suffering have to say about God, I think is a good question, but a better question is, what does surviving suffering have to say about not only God, but God in us? And I've never looked at it like that. I probably just have one last question that I think would be very helpful. I was invited um, by David to, to sit at his table. How do you deal with knowing you're not worthy, but you're being placed in a position that doesn't match your worth? Mm. Well, I, I think part of it, that question points to that 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 mind problem that we were talking about earlier. Because I asked you about what it was that was going on when your nurse dropped you. And you said that she miscalculated or underestimated my weight. So don't do the same thing today that happened yesterday. Whoa. Don't misunderestimate your weight. You belong at the table because you are a son of the king. David is recognizing what has always been true. It was true before you were dropped and it's true after you drop. This kind of relationship can't be broken. It can't be uh, cheated on away. It can't be lied on away. It can't be misused and abused away. It can't be sold away. This kind of relationship is embedded in who you are. So it's not that you are unworthy. You've always been worthy. You've just been out of place. And here David is simply inviting you back home. But when you go home, take what you learned in Lodabar, because I suspect David's never been there, but you have. And you have the ability and the power to make a difference in those who still remain there, who think that there's no way out. But you found a way out, but you also know the way in. Mm. Mr. Journey, thank you for this time. Um, I know you're a Christian and a therapist. But do, do you mind praying for the many broken people who represent me in the world? I, I've always, I'm always ready and willing to pray. Let's pray together. God, we call upon you in this space and everywhere that my voice resounds knowing that we cannot invite you into a place that you already are. So we just recognize your love, your power, and your caring, asking that you touch, heal, and deliver. Touch us in those wounded places, those places that we can't, we feel we can't talk about, we can't share, but the pain reminds us every moment that it's there. Touch us there. Heal us of our broken hearts, our broken minds, our broken situations, those situations where we were dropped and we didn't have anything to do with it. Those situations where perhaps we dropped others that didn't have anything to do with it. God, we ask that you would deliver us all 
from residing in places like Lodabar because you have not called us to such a place, but you have called us all by name to the king's table. Remind us of who you are and who we are and help us trust that we can be carried to you and not be dropped. In Jesus' name we pray. So perhaps your name isn't Mephibosheth, but you know what it means to be Mephibosheth because his name means out of the mouth of shame. And perhaps you've been carrying the situations that have harmed you and you're looking for a change. Therapy can be a healing space just like church is a healing space. God is here as, in as much as God is there. So why not give it a try? Because you'll never get to where it is you're supposed to be as long as you're trying to make sense of adult situations with childlike tools. Change today. Try something new. Try to talk about it. See if you'll find God there. Well, if you've been watching, I hope that your heart's been touched. I hope that your soul's been moved. I hope that you are taking an introspective look into how to become a whole creation in Christ Jesus. It is not just good to be saved. It is good to be saved and healthy. And so today we are challenging you to write the spaces that wholeness needs to come so that you just don't keep going around a mountain and thinking that going in circles just because you're moving doesn't mean you're progressing. Share this. It's life-changing. It will save somebody's life. Share this, share this, share this, share this. Replay this. Talk about this on social media on how it has impacted you and somebody else may be invited to the table of healing because of you. Hit and share. We love you. Take care. All right, family, here we are again. We're about to do our fourth Pay It Forward blessing, uh, where we present a check to be a blessing in somebody's life. Come go with me. Young man. How you doing? How are you? Me All David right. Williams. David Williams. How are you doing? I just want to do that. Ah, I am here. On the behalf of the Kingdom Church, Pastor David Jock is our lead pastor, and I'm Pastor Deron Dixon. And I know you were expecting to get something else, but I've come today with what we call our Pay It Forth Blessing. And on today, I want to present you with a thousand dollar check from the Kingdom Church. Here you go, I want you to look at it, open it up and see for yourself. That is all for you. What do you think, buddy? Hey, man. What are we going to do a social, social distance and hug? Yeah, yeah. You were nominated by this guy, and we just wanted to be a blessing in your life, my brother. All right. Just like that, family, we did our fourth Pay It Forward blessing, and we were able to uh, give someone another check. Listen, if you know someone who you want to nominate, please go to our website, www.tkci.org. Pull down the Pay It Forward tab, nominate someone so that we can be a blessing in their lives. God bless you all. I told y'all that word would be on fire. It was so Woo! I lost my nails. Man, that was different, Stashi. Man, to see this situation that you, you see Christians having a therapy session with a real therapist. It was wonderful. It was insightful. It awakened things that have, yes. has, it was the bomb. It was just fire. Now, if you know it was so fire, just go ahead and throw the fire emojis right I there. Like, right. I want to see this Facebook page right now with a lot of emojis. Blow up the Facebook right now with all those emojis.
Let's hashtag TKC therapy. Let's go. I know that's right. Now, we do have some amazing things that we do want to tell you about the Pay It Forward as well. That's fire too. Tell oh them, Stashi. Oh my goodness, guys, the Pay It Forward has really been blowing my mind. Yes. All you need to do, find the link that says Pay It Forward. That's it. Click on it. If click on it. If there's a family that you would like to nominate, they don't have to be members of TKC that are in a time of need and they feel as if, you feel as if they need a blessing or a, 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 a touch from God. Come on. Write a love letter, send it in to TKC, let us know, and they could possibly be chosen to be given $1,000 during this time. Because it's such a crucial time today in this society where we still have to give, despite of what things are going on, we still serve a big God, a big God, a kaboom, a big God. So we want you to stay connected with us, nominate that family because here at TKC, it's all about following God, loving love people, people, and changing the city. We love you. See you next week. Yeah.